Good morning. Here am I. I'm sorry about the sound. We'll, st we'll start again. I'm talking about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What I said to you is that people who need to be filled are people who are empty. There's a hunger, there's a thirst in life, in spiritual life, to be filled with the Spirit of God. And of course, I want you to know that this morning I'm hungry for it. I want more of it in my life. I want the Lord to bless me, to speak to me, to fill me up, to empower me, to renew me, and to change me because I have ahead of me a large schedule in the next five, six years. It's going to come in a way that I never, never will ever, ever be able to explain. Our trip to Bishop Samuel's wedding in, uh, in Lima, Peru, has brought us to understand that Argentina will be the next place to go, and Ecuador, and Bolivia, and of course, Chile. And I'm thinking about the people that I know in those countries and people I made contact with, uh, especially here in Athens, Georgia. And, and so I need to be filled in order to go and to preach and to minister to those people. Amen? Now, it says, And be not drunk with wine, for in excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what we do at Race Chapel in Athens, Georgia. We sing these songs of praise and worship. We give God the glory. We minister to them. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing to be, to be involved with the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? Tommy Tyson, 40 years ago, defined it. And Tommy Tyson said, it is the individual existence of a conscious person. So it is a person. It is someone who understands. Now, it's very necessary to tell you this, that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. Just before Jesus ascends into heaven, right there at the in Jerusalem, he said to the disciples, well, the, if I go, I'll send the Holy Spirit to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin because they do not know me. Convict the world of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Convict the world of judgment for the ruler of this world is already judged. These three things define the work of the Holy Spirit. First, he changes us in our understanding of sin. He brings us into communion with Jesus in a tender and gentle and sweet voice. Never harsh, never accusing, never condemning, never belittling, but all con continuously tender and sweet. That is the mark of the Holy Spirit work in your life. When the Holy Spirit is tender, Sweet, gentle, speaking inside of your mind, talking to your brain, saying to you things you need to hear in, in a very sweet and gentle manner. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful thing. This morning as I got up, run to the kitchen for a cup of coffee, I heard the Lord say to me, I love you. Rick Bonfim, I want you to know I love you. I love you. I love you. And I said, I love you too, Lord. I love you too, Lord. Now get me up and I need to get there to the office to see my brothers there and my sister there. And I got to go. So, And suddenly I just, in a matter of 10 minutes, I was just out of the door. So the Holy Spirit is the individual existence of a conscious person. And I'm talking to you, to those of you who do not uh, have understanding in this area, okay? How do you know? Second, how do I know I have the Holy Spirit? Can you tell? How, how do I know? Because you, you, you need to have conviction that the Holy Spirit is in you. Romans 8, 9 says, 
But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. It so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. The word dwells, it simply means he has habitation. He lives inside of us. And because he lives, you are then a spiritual person that can rationalize, that can hear God, that understands God, that receives revelation from the Lord. It is a wonderful thing to, to, to be that type of Christian. By the way, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 carries one of the most powerful verses of Scripture to, to differentiate between those who are saved and those who are unsaved. Those who are saved are called the natural person. Paul says, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Let me say one more time. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Now, the things here is something. I'll explain in a minute. Neither can he know them. So you, know, you don't receive the things of the Spirit. It has to do with the activity of the Holy Spirit. The natural man cannot understand the things the Holy Spirit moves. Let me give you just a little example. Many, many years ago in the city of Cabo Frio, Brazil, beautiful beach and beautiful hotels, north of, uh, of Niterói, Brazil, where the mission is, I had a meeting in a tent. And it was a large tent. We rented about, about I'd say, about uh, 200 feet square. And it was packed. The, the, the city of Cabo Frio gave me permission to put that tent over there. And I began to preach. And I preached for about an hour. Remember, I was sweating and T-shirt was dripping. And the Bible was difficult to handle because my fingers were wet. And it was an interesting night. And the Lord revealed to me to make an invitation that night for the people that were there. And I thought it was very strange. But, you know, uh, I learned in, early in my ministry that uh, if you hear the Holy Spirit and he tells you to do something, you better do it. You better do it, because if you don't do it, you're going to be sorry. You miss an opportunity. And the invitation was, invite the assassins to come forward. <laughs> and a lot of people came forward. One man had a dagger. He thought he hit the floor, and the, the dagger <laughs> began to ricochet in itself. i never forget that. Now, after the meeting, a man from the congregation, from the people that were there, invited me to go to, their, to his house to have some lunch. And so our staff and our group from the mission, we went to, to have lunch and supper with this, this man. He was in a wheelchair, very ill, very sick. And as soon as I walked in, I saw a bookshelf filled with books. And the Lord says, there's a gun behind this book. Take it and throw it away. For it represents murder in the past of this man's life. I told him that, and he began to cry. We took the gun and threw up in the, in the, in the sea. And I don't know what happens with the man. I never checked. But I believe the Lord began to heal him because it was a revelation of God. Now, the things of the Spirit. These are things of the Spirit. I don't know how. I don't understand all of it. I have no idea what really is happening. But I know it's, it's, it's something the Lord is doing in somebody. And all of us that love the Lord Jesus have experiences like that. It begins with you growing up. It begins with you doing ministry. You begin to experience things you never experienced before. The things of the Spirit. So the natural man can understand that. Try to explain somebody about the assassins coming forward 
Oh, by the way, one of the guys that came forward had blood in his hands. He had stabbed somebody just before coming into the tent. Sweaty, hard, nervous, perspiring, crying, hands full of blood. I can't explain that to you. The things of the Spirit, it's very difficult to explain. And then it says, neither can he know that the natural men cannot know the things of the Spirit. He cannot know that. And the reason why is because they are spiritually discerned. What do you mean by that? You're probably up there say, Brother Rick, explain that. What do you mean by, by discerned? Well, it's discerned only through the Holy Spirit. The natural man can't do that. The Holy Spirit discerns. He separates. He explains. He understands. He reveals. He comprehends the things of the Spirit. Because the things are spiritually discerned. You cannot understand. You cannot comprehend. Because it is a spiritual matter. Only the Holy Spirit of God is able to explain. So there's a lot of people who have a bone with the Holy Spirit. You know, I know a lady that uh, have a bone with the Holy Spirit, have a bone with me. I made an invitation for her to come to rekindle the flame. And she said, oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. We don't deal with people like you. So in other words, I made a mistake in calling her. <laughs> you know why she was mad with me? Because she cannot understand the natural, the natural man does not understand it. And by the way, she's a bishop. Think about that. You cannot understand it. You cannot comprehend it. It's, it's, it's not, you're not able to deal with that. Receives not and knows not. All right. Now, let me continue. Amen. How does it all happen? Don't you want to know how does someone is filled with the Holy Spirit? How does it happen? John 3, 8 shines a little light on this question. It says, the wind blows where it listens and you hear the sound of it. But you cannot tell from where it comes or where it goes. So it is everyone who's born of the Spirit. It's like the wind. You never know when it's going to happen. You keep on singing. You keep on praising. You keep on loving the Lord. You keep on going to the altar. You keep on giving your tithe money. You keep on blessing the people of God. And you keep on putting before the Lord the question, I want to be filled. I want to be empowered. I want to be renewed. I want to be changed. And as you become humble before God, it begins to happen. One of the reasons why it's so essential to be filled is because as you minister to other people, you, you, you get empty. And you be filled again and again and again, and again. And so it's a, it's a matter of a rep repetition because the more you serve the Lord, the greater need you're going to have to have the Holy Spirit empowering you, lifting you, filling you in ways you never understand. That's a spirit-filled life. A spirit-filled life is a life that is constantly filling, empowering, renewing, before God. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, there are three requirements that I want to give to you this morning. Three requirements. Who can receive this blessing? How long does it take? What are the requirements to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you qualify for this? Like to, but not sure yet? 
you got questions, you got doubts, you have fears. What am I going to do? How do I approach the Lord about this? That's the first scripture in John chapter 7, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. That really, really, really speaks to this hunger, this thirst that a Christian has. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying. Now this is the Lord Jesus just before his ascension, before the Feast of Tabernacles. He is preparing himself to ascend into heaven. And he says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Three things. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. So being thirsty, coming to Jesus and drinking are three things you're going to have to do. And if you do it, it says this, And he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is Jesus. This is the Son of God. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Three things. If you believe it, as the scripture said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. What do you mean, rivers of living water? Well, he spoke this, and the Spirit, which they said they believed on him, should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given at Pentecost. But at Pentecost, rivers began to flow out of the 120 people in Jerusalem, in the temple. This idea of flowing is constantly in the life of any believer who loves the Lord, flowing, flowing. So when it flows, when it breaks loose, when it begins to do what the Lord wants to do, you never go another way. You can prepare a Bible study, you can prepare a teaching, you can prepare a, a, a sermon, and, and nothing happens until it begins to flow. Why does it flows? That's what it says in here. It says, out of his belly, that's Jesus saying, shall flow rivers of living water. Li rivers, rivers of living How can rivers of living water flow? It flows to fill you in. You see, water flows. When water comes into a cup, it actually takes the empty of the cup and fills with the Holy Spirit. And so to be filled with the Holy Spirit simply means that rivers of living water begin to flow, begin to flow, begin to minister. I remember, I, I, I was at a church not too long ago. I was, as a matter of fact, it was a, a conference here in Athens, Georgia, called We Came to the Flame. It usually happens the second week of July every year. And as I began to teach a very, very difficult message, I had notes. I saw in the co congregation way down there a little lady. And she was kind of not, not very, very thin build and, 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 and beautiful 30-year-old young lady. And right at that particular moment, the river began to flow. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Jesus said to me, bring her in. And as I began to invite, I looked down and there was on the floor... A young lady, I don't remember, Robin, I think. She is the daughter of, uh, of Anne Mullinek. And, and, of course, Anne is the sister of Amy Davis, this young lady who works and tries to help in Brazil, ministry to the children. And, and the Holy Spirit said to me, invite the young lady, the, the, the little lady also. And the two came forward. Just before I start preaching, I was about to preach on salt, water, and oil. And the Lord intervened that message and brought those two forward. Now, after we prayed for, for 
Melissa. After we prayed for Melissa, something is beginning to happen in her marriage. And her husband, Jay Strata, went to Brazil and went to Cuba. And the Lord has changed his life. He took, they were, they were in process of divorce, and there's no divorce anymore. And they're working together. They're heading to Brazil in January, the second trip. Out of that situation, Anne Mullenek, the mother of Reuben, Ruby, was <laughs> he, uh, baptized him uh, for salvation at a, at a lake in, a, in, a, in Atlanta. Before too long, all the things are beginning to happen in the life of that family. And the Lord is doing a great thing in the life of, of, of Michelle. Melissa, Melissa Strata and Jay Strata. You see, it began to flow. I don't know how it all done. I don't understand the way it was. But out of my belly began to flow rivers of living water as if the Lord is just renewing me, changing me. And I was able to hear the invitation. And as we pray for those two people, the Holy Spirit came down that night and saved and baptized Lots of people at the Civic Center in Athens, Georgia. You see, that is the way the Holy Spirit, it's a win. You never know when it comes. You never know when it goes. It does whatever it wants to do. If you are ready, if you're open, if you're susceptible to the presence of the Holy Spirit in that manner, then you have to understand that it, it, it will move. And all you have to do is to just be able to understand what is say Now, what is the miracle that night in my life? Not in their life, but in my life. Is that I was able to hear. I heard it. I heard clear as a bell. Invite the young, little young lady there. And invite the little one that's close to her. Invite them forward. Pray for both of them. And that was it. The altar started and people began to come from everywhere. And the Lord just blessed that night in a way that I, I, I it's hard to forget. You know, a hundred people at the altar sometimes overwhelms you. So Jesus, in this verse in, in John 7, 37, says, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. There are three things. If any man is thirst, only for those that want it. A lot of people are, love to be in church. They want, they want to be in church. It doesn't mean they want to be filled. It is a personal decision that you have to consider. You see, close to 38 years ago, I was in Athens, Georgia at the Civic Center where the United Methodist Church had their conference. And I remember that uh, in those days I was thirsty. I was thirsty to no end. I used to travel and play the guitar here and play the guitar there. As a matter of fact, I played the guitar so much that it damaged one of my fingers. Okay, I have this this finger, you see, is because I just went in this way. And, uh, and of course, I have pain in, in this hand. I mean, I traveled for 30-some years, my goodness gracious, just everywhere, from Maine Bangor all the way to Miami, Florida. And so, I was tired. I felt like somehow I just don't want to play those songs anymore. I felt like I tried. I, I was entertaining people and I was tired of entertaining. I don't want to entertain nobody anymore. And I began to question myself. My father came to visit me and said, if you don't get it and be filled and be empowered, you're going to die. And I felt death just coming over me. Oh, I'm telling you. Those cold nights to where no blankets can warm you up. Those cold nights when you can drink a cup of coffee and it goes directly out of the bathroom. It never does anything to you. It doesn't wake you up. It doesn't talk to you. It doesn't do nothing. You read the scripture and you don't get nothing from it. You pray and you think your prayer just hit the roof. It comes down the floor, 
that goes nowhere. Oh, what a, what a sad moment in my life when I was a cold. Weary of trying to understand the word. Praying, repetition, prayers, living the Christian life by your own efforts, worn out, tired of doing yourself, dry, thirsty. If you're feeling that way, you're qualified to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God can come upon you and zap you to the world where, and before too long you are a new man in Christ and life has changed. So be thirsty. Second, it says, come to me. Jesus is the only one who can empower you, renew you, fill you with the Holy Spirit. Nobody can but Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit. People say to me, Rick, I've done this before, and I come to the Lord, I come to Jesus. Nothing happened. John 6, 37. John 6, 37 says this. All that the Father giveth, giveth me shall come to me. All that the Father give me shall come to me. In him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you come to Jesus and you ask him to bless your life, to strengthen your life, he will never, never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will, he will not cast you out. If you come, he will meet you at the point of your need and bless your life abundantly. What if I come and he doesn't want me? It's not biblical. He is the baptizer. He is the one that fills. He, if you come thirsty, he will not turn you away. That's his word. And third, it's where a lot of people stop. They do not receive him. You know, it's saying you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. <laughs> and he's right. No one can drink for you but you. You have to swallow. You have to get the cup. And you have to turn right into the middle of your mouth. And the water comes inside of your mouth. And you have to drink it. Not God. You must drink. Another thing too, you can't drink with your mouth closed. Drink, drink, drink until it overflows. Acts 2.30. 2, verse 3 and 4. Just as strong as the day of Pentecost, Jesus can come and fill you up to overflow. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, lift your hands up first and say, Heavenly Father, oh God, I begin the day today and I ask you, Lord, to have mercy upon my life. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, deliver me, God, from everything that says, that I'm not able to receive it. I receive this morning, Lord, your Holy Spirit. Build me up, God. Remove all the sin in my life. Cause me to understand who you are. Empower me to renew you, God. Deliver me, God, from everything that is contrary to your word in my life. Father, I thank you that all the days of my life belong to you. One of these days you call my name. And I'll meet you, Lord, in the gates of heaven. And I'll say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for filling me with your Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, bless my life. I ask you, Lord, to bless my family, my children, my grandchildren. Empower them, renew them, God, every family member. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If this morning you made a decision for Christ, and ask the Lord to fill you with your Holy Spirit, contact us. Our address is rbm, r-b-m, at latterain.com. Latte and rain together. Latterain.com. And tell us what the Lord is doing in your life. In Jesus' name, amen.